Truth be told, lately it seems like all of my recipes are based around the holidays. So now that the holidays are finally all done, I can do what I want to do and I just feel like making a lasagna. So that's why I wanted to make today my lasagna for two. It's so cute because you just make it in a little loaf pan, but it's perfect because you don't have to have leftover lasagna for days. So if you want to know how to make it, then grab your loaf pan and I'll show you how to make this. We're jumping right to it and we're starting with our meat sauce first. But all you're going to need for this lasagna for two is meatloaf mix, garlic, onion, crushed red pepper flakes, egg, mozzarella cheese, heavy cream, ricotta cheese, parmesan cheese, parsley, tomato sauce, diced tomatoes, and oven ready lasagna noodles. I have one small onion that I diced up. We're gonna let this sweat with a sprinkle of salt for about five minutes until they're nicely softened. Okay, nice and soft, so we're gonna add in three cloves of minced garlic, as well as half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes because you know I like things a little bit spicy. And we're just gonna saute this out for about 30 seconds until they're toasted and fragrant. I'm gonna add in eight ounces of meatloaf mix. And these days you can find this in the grocery store called meatloaf mix. But if you can't, it's just four ounces of ground pork with four ounces of ground beef. So half and half. Season with a little SNP. The pink is mostly gone, so we're gonna add in something interesting. Two tablespoons of heavy cream. This is kind of like a little secret or a trick to making the sauce taste like it's been home cooked, like a bolognese um, for a long time. It almost softens the meat. Now we're gonna add a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes with their juice, as well as an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. Again, a little bit SMP, just a smidge. You don't wanna make it too salty. Now I'm gonna just put, let this simmer for about two minutes or so, just so that the flavors can melt a little bit better. The key to a lasagna is a really good sauce and a really good ricotta mixture, right? You know, that creamy layer. So we're gonna add four ounces of ricotta. I don't really mind if it's part skim or whole fat, whatever you can find. So that's four ounces or half a cup. We're also going to use half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And now you're going to add one egg. So I'm just going to lightly mix it up first. And this will loosen up your mixture. The egg acts as a binder, so it just kind of holds all the cheese together. And I'm going to use two tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley. Feel free to substitute with basil if you want to. That would be really delicious and fresh tasting. And it's okay if you have a little leftover because maybe I'll use it as garnish on the top. Ooh, that looks so pretty and happy. It's up to you if you want to add a light sprinkling of salt, but there is a lot of Parmesan cheese in there. So I don't think you need it, especially if you seasoned your meat sauce really well. Otherwise it might get too salty, the whole lasagna. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of pepper though. Okay, it looks nicely combined. The last thing you need is one cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. And again, you can use whole or part skim. I'm using part skim. You also have two more tablespoons of finely grated Parmesan cheese, which you'll see what I do with this later. Since this is a lasagna for two, I'm using a loaf pan. We went to a Christmas party before, and this was a white elephant gift that we brought. And then for some reason, we walked away with our own present. But guess what? It's coming to good use, all right? Now, I'm gonna add in just a little bit of the meat sauce. And I didn't spray it or grease it or anything. It should be nonstick, but you can if you want to, if you just wanna be extra careful. And you're creating a bed of moisture because we're gonna use these guys. These are oven-ready lasagna noodles. 
I actually tried this recipe before with a different brand other than this Barilla brand, and it didn't work out as well because if you actually compare, these are super thin, and so they cook really well in the oven without boiling, which is perfect for this recipe because it's like low fuss, and it also fits into the pan nicely. But if you can't find it, you could still try using my recipe, but maybe just cook it longer or even soak it in some hot water first if it's thicker. If it's any thicker than this, this is like a sheet of paper, a sheet of cardboard. So now with your ricotta mixture, you're gonna try to eyeball it into three parts. And what I like to do is with the lasagna noodle still in my hand, I just like to take one third of the ricotta mixture and spread it out. Cause I think it's just easier to control this way. Put that down into the pan and then you're gonna get a quarter cup of that one cup of mozzarella cheese and sprinkle it right on top. Next, a little more sauce. So now it's your responsibility to make sure that you divide it evenly so that you, you have a little bit of sauce left for the top. And now you're gonna do this whole layering process two more times. last noodle so that's four now on the top of this you have no more ricotta mixture because the very top what you're gonna do is whatever mozzarella cheese you had left over you add in your two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese and you mix it together you can use your clean hands grab your remaining meat sauce and just put it on that dry noodle I think I did a pretty good job about rationing my meat sauce. I'm gonna squish it down just a smidge so it doesn't become too tall out of my pan, but I don't wanna smush it down too much because then all those beautiful layers will get squashed too. And then you got your remaining mozzarella parm mix and you're gonna put a generous, the most generous layer of the cheese is on the top because you know, that's the most eye-catching part where it's like all gooey and melted. The last step is to tent your lasagna so that the moisture in here will cause steam inside the pan and it'll cook your noodles. So we're gonna use some nonstick spray and spray a piece of aluminum foil so that the cheese doesn't stick to it. Smart, eh? I like to try to give myself a little bit of a lift in the center so it doesn't really touch the cheese. And then I'm gonna crimp it and then we're just gonna pop it into a 400 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. For my oven, it takes usually about 25 minutes. And after that, we're going to uncover it and then let it brown and let the cheese bubble a little bit for 10 minutes or so. Cheers to no more holidays for a while. <laughs> Cheers. Now you'll notice that the lasagna is watery when you first take it out, but it stiffens up and absorbs more of the liquid as it sits. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Hits the spot, right? Mm -hmm. Delicious. Perfectly seasoned because of that sauce. Good tomato flavor. Mm -hmm. And that ricotta mixture, so creamy. For substitutions, there's nothing much to say. Pretty much, you can use whatever ground meat you want and whatever herbs you want, but other than that, I don't really have any other extra notes. So, I hope you enjoyed watching this and you give this a try, and it's great because we don't have a ton of leftovers afterwards. Be sure to check out our behind the scenes video of the making of this episode. We'll leave a link for you, and we'll also leave a link for our previous episode, our creme brulee for two. So I hope you enjoyed watching this and if you did, remember to tell us by pushing like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Mm. So good.